Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can align and sync up loops inside of Logic 10. So this is gonna be really helpful for producers out there who may have passed on using a loop that was 10, 20 BPM out of the range that they were currently working on or working on in the track, and you went with a loop that you didn't like as much, but it was you know at the tempo you were working at. So this video, we're gonna cover both melodic and percussive elements. I'm gonna show you some kind of tips and tricks to do this kind of the fast way. I will show you the, um, I, I don't wanna say the basic way, but the probably the if you open up the manual and logic, they'll say that this is the way to do it. But I'm gonna expand on that and show you some tricks that I've stumbled upon over the years of using logic that just make it quicker, easier, and more efficient. All right, so let's take a quick listen to the track that I'm working on that we're going to ultimately add the hi-hat loop to in this video, as well as the guitar loop. All right, so just going over what's going on in the track. Up here we have our drum, our drum section. It's pretty sparse right now. We got a kick, clap, and then an accent snare. Our 808 is coming from Anna 2. A little bit of processing. Uh, under that, we have two of these, these uh, flute tracks. They actually came from our pack Sphere. It's a Serum Sound Set sample pack. And I bounced one out to apply some processing to it, some elastic pitch. And this one's still in Serum. It sounds like this together. And then under that, we have a couple instances of our pack, the X keys, kind of uh, fulfilling the duty of the ambient sound that's tucked into the background. All right. So we want to add some guitars and some hi hats, some top loops to this uh, to this track. All right. So before we actually get into the time stretching and how to align it, let's quickly talk about this term that's going to come up a lot in this video: flex time or flex editing. So that's the kind of system that Logic and Apple have put in place for how Logic 10 deals with editing, manipulating the timing of audio. It's called flex time. Now flex time basically turns on an algorithm that analyzes the audio and you can set that algorithm. You can set it to polyphonic, monophonic, rhythmic, slicing. There's a couple more that are a little bit more uh, specific use cases. But either way, you're going to be working with a flex time algorithm if you're trying to line up your source material. Now it's important to be aware of those those algorithms because they have a big impact on the sound. Obviously, if I have like a piano loop and I'm trying to align it, I don't want to choose rhythmic. I want to choose polyphonic or maybe monophonic, but definitely not rhythmic because that's tailored more for rhythmic sounds, percussive sounds. So flex time, there's these different algorithms. Kind of mess around with them, get comfortable with using them because they do make a big difference when you're doing this. We can see here that our beat is at 140 beats per minute or BPM. And we can go up to right where it's under, under our actual tempo where it says keep tempo. And I can select these different options. There's this window that appears that says smart tempo project settings. Now from here, I can go down to the middle and you can see here it says set imported audio files too. And I can choose on, on align bars, align bars and beats. So let's just do on and align bars. Now, what this will do is anytime I drag in an audio file, Logic X is going to turn on a flex time, try to figure out which flex time algorithm it should use. It usually defaults to polyphonic. And then after that, it's going to stretch the audio in a non-destructive way, which is great because it means that your audio file that you're pulling in doesn't get manipulated or changed. So the drawback to this though is if you drag in a one-shot sample, Logic with that on is going to stretch or trim, try to uh, basically quantize a one-shot sample, which you wouldn't ever want to do, right? Because it's either going to mess up the attack or it's going to mess up the tail, especially if you have like a snare shot that's reverb or clap, right? So let's just look at this real quick though. And uh, make a new track, Command, Option A, new audio track, and I'm just gonna go over, slide over my window and I have a folder of some of our drum samples here. This is from our pack, a looped, completely free drum pack. You can grab it, links in the description. So we're at 140 beats per minute, so I don't wanna take anything that's like 120, 110. Let's take something at like 150. So I'm just gonna take this in, not even gonna to listen to it. You can see that Logic just analyzed it and you can see that it does in fact line up. So if we play this. Right, it is in time, but let's take a listen to the sound. All right, sounds pretty good. But you can see here, this little blue, uh, it looks kind of like a DNA helix to me. Uh, it's on up here, 
and it's on right here. This is saying that flex time is on and active, and under it is the flex time mode that Logic applied to it. Well, this isn't a polyphonic loop, this is rhythmic. So I would either use slicing, rhythmic, maybe monophonic on this. Let's try rhythmic. Now, when we do this, when we change the mode, the timing's still all there, and we don't have to go through and you know do anything. It's just changing the algorithm. That sounds better to me. than the polyphonic mode. Now, let's say that for whatever reason, there's a unique timing or some part of your groove or the loop you just dragged in that didn't get aligned properly. Well, you can go and edit it manually. So if we zoom way in here, you can see these little kind of gray tick marks at the start of each transient. You can actually click these and this will insert what's called a flex time marker. And now from here, you can drag these around. So I have a video, I mentioned this in the intro that uh, I look at how you can make loops more unique, more original. Well, I can actually change this loop up. So let's say I wanted to change up the rhythm. I can drag this here, right? We can uh, shorten these. Right, let's undo that. So yeah, you can go through and you can edit the timing. Now this is helpful for two reasons. Obviously, if it logic screwed up or if something's out of time, off grid, or if you just want to get in there and kind of create a new loop from that loop, you can do it. All right, so that's one way to import a uh, loop and get it to sync up with your host BPM. I'm going to show you an easier way that I like a little bit more just because it doesn't affect one shot samples. So we're going to delete this track. We're going to do the same thing, command, option, and then A for new track. Pop it up here, solo it. So let's go up to my keep tempo settings, smart project tempo settings, and let's turn this off. All right. Oh, real quick, if you guys aren't seeing that up at the top of your logic, it might be because you're in a different transport view uh, section. So you can see here, I, 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 you still have it. It just will look different. I'm in the custom one, so I can see all the you know extra stuff that I want to see. All right, so let's go back to that loop. And we're going to drag and drop. And now you can see that it isn't lined up. That's a four bar loop. And this doesn't extend to four bars, right? All right, so here's a, here's a cool thing you can do. So take your mouse, hover over the end of the audio region or the loop, hold down option. It should change from the loop. Go to the, about, go to the middle in case you have the uh, fade tool turned on. Go to the middle where it'll show you the loop icon, right? And if I drag, it starts to loop that audio region. Hold down alt or option, and you get this. I don't even know what that looks like, but it's a weird cursor. Now, this is actually going to time stretch and stretch the audio. So I know this is going to be four bars. So I need to go from bar one to five, right? So all I have to do is click and drag this out now. And now it's going to be in time. This is basically the manual version of the smart project. But the, the trade-off is it doesn't default to the polyphonic mode. You can see that's working in monophonic flex time. And then also, it's going to uh, allow you to drag and drop one-shot samples without those being stretched. So what we can do is we can turn on flex time here and we'll just keep it to rhythmic or slicing. So let's take a listen. Right, and again, all I'm doing is holding down Alt, Option, and I'm click and dragging. Now, you don't, you can even do it another way. Um, you can drag it into your session and turn on flex time, and then all you have to do is go up to the top and move it around as opposed to the alt or option. So I like that for our hi-hat loop. Let's move on to the polyphonic, the melodic content that we're gonna add, which is gonna be a guitar loop. All right, so here's the guitar loop. I'm gonna throw it in, and we're going to just turn on our flex mode, and that will, if it's the polyphonic, probably just align it. If, it if, if that isn't on, again, we can option click, drag, and it should be lined up. Then we can turn on our flex mode and make sure that everything is in fact lining up. So let's mute the flutes and just take a listen to the guitar with the hi-hats. All right, so it's lined up right away with our, with, our, with our tempo. So the nice thing about using flex time in Logic and why I think this is actually one of the uh, better kind of uh, work, workflows for dealing with tempo changes and aligning loops is because now I can actually change my global BPM and it's gonna be fine as long as I have the flex time on for each of these loops, which I do. All right, so now that I have flex time on for all the audio regions, I can now go through and I can actually just change the tempo of my track. So if we speed this up, we can see that everything is still four bars. 
right? I can slow it down. All right, so that's gonna sum up the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, post those, try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, really mean a lot to us if you did hit that subscribe button and if you do smash that notification bell so you get an update when we release a new video all right thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time